Thanks. Hello, my name is Paul Lemon, and I'm here to help resolve whatever conflict you may be having with your teacher using mediation. Have you ever participated in mediation before? No, man, no. Well, mediation is a way to resolve disputes by talking about the problems you may be having. My job as a mediator is to listen to your side of the story and the other side and help you all come up with better ways of dealing with the problems you may be having. I might offer some suggestions on how to deal with the problems, but I don't take sides. It'll be up to you to decide the best way to handle the issue in the end. But before we begin, I want to explain a few rules that we're going to have to agree on before we can get started. It's going to take long, huh? It's going to take however long it takes to come up with a conclusion that works for you, okay? And so, the first rule is that everyone's going to be given an opportunity to speak and tell their side, but there's no interrupting, okay? You've got to stay seated during the entire mediation. There shouldn't be any name calling or teasing during the mediation. And I need you to be committed to trying to find a solution to the problem or problems that you're having. You Good. Tell me your name, your age, and your grade level. My name is Jerome in the fourth. I'm 14, I'm in the seventh grade, man. Um, your teacher, Mr. Lemon, indicated that he sent you out of the classroom for yelling out in class. Yelling. And for coming to class late. However, Jerome, I'd like for you to tell me your side of the story. Right, man, man, look. It all got started when I got switched to this Mr. Lemon's classroom for Miss Katie's class. Because I came in the room and and Miss Lemon just started harassing me, me but me, because I was I was a little bit late. I might have been like a minute, maybe a minute, ten seconds late. You know, next thing I know, he's trying to embarrass me. I didn't have my homework that day. Look, I, I had stuff I had to do when I got out of school. I, I had some responsibilities I had to take care of. You know, I didn't have a pencil. Um, I was trying to request a pencil, and you know, he just and we just he just wouldn't let go. And I was with my classmate, man. We started talking about this new Luda video, and you know, we weren't really disturbing the class because the person then was even talking and sent me to the office, man, and saying I was disrupting his class. Well, do you think that was showing Mr. Lemon or your classmates respect when you're talking in class while he's trying to teach? First of all, I wasn't really talking in class. I just made a comment. And, but, you know, no, but, I mean, I ain't no genius, man. And, and sometimes he gives these long assignments on the same day, same day my, my favorite show was on, man. You know, he, I want to do things. He act like it's just his way of no hot way. And I just, you know, I ain't got time for all that, man. I, you know, I, I, I want to see my shows, I want to see my BET videos, you know, I don't want to sit in class all day and listen to this man read notes all day, every day. It's boring. The man is boring, okay? Okay, now remember, we agree. We're not going to do any name calling, insulting, okay? We want to keep it clean and just talk about how these things are making you feel, and then we're going to try to come up with a resolution that works for you, okay? Okay, okay. I, I, okay. okay. Right. Well, let me see, you know, Everyone has some talents and interests. Can you tell me what some of your interests and talents are? I like sports, cars, BT. I want to be a rapper. So look, I don't even really need to be in school. What school gonna help help with my game, help with my flow? You know, mama wasn't making if my mom wasn't making me go to school, bruh, I wouldn't even be here. Alright? I'm here by four, it's not by choice. Hey, have you ever heard of Lil Wayne? I mean, I'm joking. I know you know who Lil Wayne is. That's what would be funny, huh? But did you know he went to the University of Houston? Or about the fact that Ludacris not only graduated from one of the largest colleges in Georgia, but he graduated near the top of his class. Or David Banner. You know, he went right here in Baton Rouge to Southern University. And after he finished Southern, he went on to the University of Maryland and got an advanced degree in teaching. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Uh, if it ain't on the record label, BT will talk about it, it ain't important to me. It ain't helping this change in the way people look at the degree, they care less about what degree he got. Okay? Look, be honest, I don't know why he defended school anyway. Man, these, these, prob these raps are probably smart and talented, man. I, I, sometimes I don't even know if I have enough brain skill to pull school on. Well, I'm sure with some hard work, you can show you're just as smart as them. If you want to be a successful rapper, you need the skills taught in school. Hey, you talking about all these skills, skills here, skills. What skills are you talking about? 
school ain't gonna teach me no way how to deal with my game, my flow. All right. Well, doesn't rapping, all rapping, start with something that someone had to write down? They had to write down the lyrics. So your writing class can help you put ideas on paper, make your flow better. If you're getting a recording contract, don't you need to be able to read the contract you're about to sign so that you understand the terms in the contract? Ain't you in law school? Ain't that kind of, I guess, how are you one day? Ain't that what lawyers supposed to do in the first place? Well, I make the money, they come to the paperwork. Ain't that hard? That's true, but how will you know they aren't running game on you if you don't get a better education? How will you know that the amount of money you're getting paid is a fair amount for the concerts that you perform in? Or know that you're getting your fair share of the royalties for your record sales if you aren't in math class? Today's rappers are also involved in other types of businesses like clothing lines, energy drinks. 50 Cent sold his energy drink for $50 million. You think that someone doesn't understand business could make a deal like that? Right. I guess I ain't really never think about it. That's, you know, you don't really hear this stuff in the music videos and see it on the rap labels. The rappers never talk about that, man. They just talk about their music. I guess when you think about it, I guess you, I guess you got a point. Ultimately, Jerome, only you can decide what's important to you. I just wanted to point out that most highly successful rappers finished high school and many went on to college. The rap game is big business today, and those that prepare for it by getting a good education have more options than those that don't. Man, they need to put that on the record label, CD, man, to make you kind of think about it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a bet. What's the bet? I'll bet you can never find someone who will tell you that they regret getting an education, that it was the biggest mistake they ever made. But I'll bet you one other thing, you can find several people that will tell you that they really regret not finishing their education. Hmm. I hear you, man. So, Jerome, what I really want you to, to think about and maybe take from this mediation is how much that school can offer you, but you've got to be present. You must be in the class. You've got to be paying attention because the teacher here is trying to give you all kinds of knowledge that's going to help you in the rap game. Everything from learning how to write a good rap to learning the math skills that you need to be able to go through these contracts and do the big business because you want to be a big baller. you got to know Shot how to do it. that for yourself. Right. You don't want to have to rely on hiring people to do all that because then you got to trust they're not doing you wrong. If you have the education, you can be the boss man and do all this for yourself. But okay. you got to be present, and you got to be focused, and you got to be committed to doing the best. So what you I do, man, you know, I, I, I try my best. I, you know, I, I'm hearing what you're saying, but you know, what I do when when I want to stay in class, it's like she like he just pushing my buttons. You know, reason why they call it schoolwork is because it's work. It's hard. If it wasn't, they'd be calling it school fun. So there's a time for everything, and now the time you got to put your work in so that you can enjoy the fruits of all that work later. I guess it's just figuring out how to play the game like these rappers do. It's right? just another type of game. All right, man, I hear you, and I'll, I'll do my best. I'll be that big ball and shot call when they come back, and I can tell the teacher if I want to put my video on that. Action. Okay. So, Britt, let's you and I go have a conversation outside. Okay. I quickly want to repeat the rules. No interrupting me, and I won't interrupt you. We listen respectfully to each other. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. Okay, then. I brought you out here because I wanted the opportunity to speak to you alone. It seems to me that you have a lot of pull with the other girls, and that most of the controversy seems to revolve around you. Is that fair? I guess. Well, how about you tell me your side of the story while we're alone? You can tell me anything. I'm not with your school, and I'm not here to judge who's right and wrong in this situation. Well, it's simple. If those girls want to fight, I'm going to fight. I can't be disrespected like that. How do they disrespect you? The way they look at me and they talk about me. What types of things do they say? They say things like, oh, Brit's 15 in the 8th grade, like she's scary, or that they're better than me. How does that make you feel? It makes me want to fight them. It makes me angry, and I'm not no punk. They don't have to talk like that about me. I'm trying to mind my business. 
You're trying to mind your own business? Yes. And they just come up and throw shoulders and say mean things for no reason? Yeah. Okay. I want to really understand what the problem is, so I'm going to have you fill out an I feel statement. All right. Okay. This is the statement. The first statement is, I feel blank. This is your opportunity to let me know exactly how you feel and even help make it clear to yourself. The next one is, when you blank. This is what the other person did to you. Okay. And then the because blank. This is how it affected you. And finally, I would like blank is what you want to happen, what you want to see happen. Let's see what you have. Okay, good job. This is very helpful. Now I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. They're not related to the conflict. It just helps me to know better how I can help you. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an athlete like Venus and Serena Williams. That's awesome. Pick three words that describe you best. Um, I'm pretty, I'm smart, and I'm tough. That's great. I guess you're going to have to be tough if you want to be an athlete. Those ladies deal with a lot of hard work and a lot of pressure from winning and losing. You also have to be smart to handle all the media attention, money, and endorsements that come from being a successful and pretty athlete. So I think you could be perfect for that, but we have to get you through school. Let me tell you one little great, really great thing about getting into high school. You can get free coaching. When you join a high school team, you get coached for free and you get to compete. High school is so much more fun than junior high. Did you know that when Venus and Serena were your age, their daddy had them out of school on the national tennis circuit? And because so many of the other tennis players said mean things about them, he took them out of competition to concentrate on their schoolwork. School is important, and even the Williams sisters had to make it a priority at one point in their lives. I didn't know that. It's true. Venus finished getting a college degree from an art institute a few years ago so that she could design her own clothing line. Education is very important, and even if you didn't go to college right off the bat, you have to finish high school in order to keep your options open, just like Venus did. Tell me more about yourself. What kind of activities do you like? Um, I like shopping and listening to music, and I like to hang out with my friends. I like all those things, too. What type of activities related to school or church or anything like that do you like? Um, I like art class. And I like dancing. What type of challenges does art and dance present? Um, you have to think of something. Like, be creative in dance. You have to learn steps real fast or get out of step. That's true. I bet you're pretty creative, though. Yeah. Well, Brett, I feel like I know a lot more about you. And I think that you have great potential to get out of here and graduate high school and start making some of your dreams happen in your life. Besides apologies, what could you do to move forward from here with the other girls and not get into any more trouble? I guess I could stay away and mind my own business. If I hear that they say something, I guess I could just ignore it. Yes, that's great. You could just ignore it and walk away. Brett, I want you to understand that mediation is a way to avoid punishment. If we can get you girls to agree to leave each other alone and be respectful, you get another chance to be in school without getting suspended or expelled. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Good. Then I'm going to give you some tips on avoiding a fight, and then do you think you could sign an agreement and follow it as long as the other girls agree? Yeah. Great. Here are some things for everyone involved to do so we can keep you all from getting punished and possibly expelled. Keep your distance from the person who wants to fight you. Talk to the person about why he wants to fight you and tell her how you feel. Back away from the troublemaker. Try to ignore any negative things they might have to say. Don't insult your opponent or become angry with them, but just be calm and try to convince them that a fight is a bad idea. I know that's hard when you feel disrespected, but that's the most important thing, to just stay calm. Don't let your friends or people in a crowd make you fight. Remember. You're the one that's going to get suspended or expelled, not them.
and it's happened before. When all else fails, remember there's no shame in walking away. What do you think, Brett? Can you do it? They do. Absolutely. I'm not asking you to do anything they're not going to do. In just a minute, we're going to rejoin the group and sign a contract. Is that good with you? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say or talk about before we, we rejoin them? No. Okay, then. Thanks for talking one-on-one -on -one with me today. Hi, I'm Roxy Welch. And I'm Canoes Troy Hall. We're the mediators that come work with you today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, okay? I'm in law school, I'm a senior in law school. I've been doing this for four years. I am a grandmother of eight grandchildren. I've got three who live with me. One's 16, one's 13, and one's eight, and they're all girls. That's a very good um, I'm in law school also. I'm a 3 year. I've been doing this for about three years and this semester about. Um, I work full time during the day and go to school at night. And uh, once I finish law school, I'm going to go on and um, practice litigation. So I'm, I'm a student by night and an employee by day. Not exactly. I work all day long. I work for the mayor. And at night time. I go to school and I take care of those girls. And what's your name? Tamara Lane. It's nice to meet you, Tamara. What nice grade to meet are you Tamara. in? Okay. All right. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, Tamara. Um, I like to dance. Well, that's cool. Do you take lessons? Yes. Well, that's good. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. Tell me about them. How many brothers do you have? Um. Three. How many sisters do you have? Two. Well, how old are they? Uh, one is five, one is ten, one is two, and uh, one is twelve, and the other is fifteen. Do they live with you? Do they all live with you? Um, sometimes. Okay. Um, who do you live with? Uh, my grandmother and my mother. Oh, okay. Um, does your mama does your mama work? Um, sometimes. Okay. What does she do? How uh, she work? She cleans houses. Okay. What does your grandmother do? Um, she works at a store. Okay. Is your mama working now? You said she works sometimes. Um, no. She's not working right now. No. Um, Tamara, what would you like to do when you grow up? Um, I want to be a hairdresser. Oh, okay, that's a good thing. You know, you make a lot of money being a hairdresser. What do you think you need to know to be a hairdresser? <laughs> well, why would you like to be a hairdresser? Because it looks fun. It looks like fun? You know, to be a hairdresser, you have to be able to work with people really well. You know that? You have to be patient. you got to get along with people. You know that, huh? I mean, every day people come in and they fuss at you because their hair's not right, and you've got to be able to have the skills to be able to work with them and communicate what they want and what you can do, and you have to do it in a very patient way. You understand that? Mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of patience standing there all day long doing this and listening to people. Some of them are very nice and some of them are not all that nice, but that's your job. So that's one thing. You have to have good people skills. It's a really important thing. The other thing is you have to be dependable. If somebody sets an appointment for you, they expect you to be there on time. And that's another skill. It's a very important skill. Of course, that's an important skill for anything you do in life. Always know, make, making sure you're on time, that you're always there when you say you're going to be there because people depend on you. If you don't show up, the person has got a problem and the person who's hired you has a problem. You understand that? So that's some skills that you use right now in school. Being dependable, always here, always doing what you're supposed to do, and being able to learn how to work with people, even when they're difficult. That's a skill that you need to learn. Another thing, you've got to have business skills. you got to know how to count money, how to add money. you got to know what your tip is going to be, what your tip should be, and that's percentages. And so you have to figure out what it's going to be at the end of your pay how much taxes are going to come out, and you've got to be able to manage your life. And if you want to run your own business, you've got to know how much to pay everybody. So that's a lot of math.
that goes into being a hairdresser. A lot of math is important. And chemistry. You know what happens if you mix the wrong stuff and put it on someone's hair? Lawsuit. <laughs> Big lawsuit. Their hair falls out because it can burn their head. So some terrible things can happen if you don't understand science. So you've got science that goes there. And with all that being said, the thing that you like best about it is probably the art. Because when you look at someone's face, you've got to help them decide what looks good, what will look good for them. And you've got to help them decide that. And so you've got art, you've got math, you've got science, you've got um, business skills, which is also math. You've got percentages, you've got all of those things that are very, very important. And all of those things are things that you have to learn right now while you're, while you're at school. And if you don't learn them now, it's much harder to learn them later on in life. So it's very important that you understand that. You know, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that thing, those things? No. Well, it's a good time, though, to, to think about that. What grade are you in, Tamara? Eight. See, it's a really good time because you're going to be going into high school. And when you go into high school, if you haven't set the path that you want to go, it's really kind of hard to go backwards and change your mind. So you've got to decide where you're going to go. And that's the thing. Being successful at anything requires a commitment. It requires that you have make a decision and follow through on those decisions. To be able to do anything in life, you kind of have to know the path. And if you know the path, then that way you can get there a whole lot faster. You understand what I'm saying? What do you think I mean by that, Tamara? All right, well, think about this. Think about it this way. You've got a friend, and your friend lives in South Baton Rouge. Well, you, you live in North Baton Rouge, right? So your friend lives in South Baton Rouge. You know she lives in South Baton Rouge. You know kind of the direction she lives in, sort of. But you don't, you don't have her address. You don't have uh, her neighborhood. But you know she's in South Baton Rouge and she's sort of over there by some other people you know. And so you go that direction, how likely are you to find her house if you don't have her phone, you don't have her address? Are you likely to find that house? Chances are not too good, are they? But on the other hand, if you know exactly where she lives and what road you have to take to get there, and you can go from where you are to her house straight. And it's so much easier. You don't have to backtrack. You don't waste time. You just go straight ahead. And that's what it means on setting a path, Tamara. To be able to find your way to where you want to be, you have to decide early enough to know how you're going to get there. And that's one of the things we're here about. Uh, we understand that you're having some problems with fighting is what your principal said. Is that one of the problems you're having? Yeah. Well, and that's what we're here for. We're here, we're mediators. Do you know what mediation is? Mediation is where we help you find ways to resolve your problems, whatever they are. And so we help you find some sorts of solutions that will work for you. You understand that? But to do this, you have to understand that there are some rules. You are going to be allowed to speak all the time. Troy, would you like to tell yeah, the rules? Yeah, sure. So that's what you tell me. They're, they're, they're simple. Five, four, four quick ones, but they're really important to have a successful mediation. Number one, you would be allowed to speak. We're here to listen to you. We're here to, to hear your concerns. We're giving you a chance to say how you feel about the situation. But it's important that we respect each other when Persons are talking, so no interruption at all. Um, must stay in your seat the whole time. You can fidget, you know. I know sometimes it's hard to stay seated all day. But no getting up back and forth out of your seat. Um, do your best to honestly try and work towards solving the problem. Even though you may not feel like it, try it and see how it feels. And you'll see how it will make you feel a whole lot better once you get to that stage. And 
whatever is said in this room stays in this room. It's kind of like Vegas. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Whatever happens in here stays in here. No one else knows, but as well as myself and you. That's cool. Cool. Okay, so you can agree to these rules? All right, great. And your principal has said you've been having trouble fighting. Tell us about this. What's going on? Um, there are some girls that keep looking at me in the hallway and being really rude. So we fight. What do you mean by being really rude? Just saying stuff behind my back in my spring and talking about me. Okay, how do you know they're talking about you? <laughs> Why? I mean, how do you know that? <laughs> I don't know. Have they ever said they were talking about me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who's told you that? This girl. Some other girl? Yes. Let me ask you something, Tamara. Do you like these girls? No. But they can push your buttons to control you. You understand that that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you don't like them. Mm -hmm. But you're letting them get inside your head and control you. Do you realize that, right? Mm -hmm. Because what they're saying to you is triggering a response from you to get you in trouble. I mean, you've been suspended three times. That's not such a good thing for you. So these girls that you don't even like, you're letting them control your life. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that you could solve this? Do not talk to them. Find a parent or a teacher to walk me down the hallway or tell the principal instead of hitting them. Okay, those are all some really good su suggestions. Are they something you're likely to do? Are you? Yes. All right. You wouldn't have a problem whenever the girls are following you and talking to you. Maybe walking toward an adult? No. What could happen if you if, if somebody's behind you and they're taunting you, they're calling you names, they're saying bad things, what do you think is going to happen if you walk to the nearest adult? They'll stop. Yeah, they'll stop, they'll stop. I think they probably will stop calling you names or they'll stop following you. But the worst case scenario is that they're stupid and they follow you anyway and they say it anyway and then you've got a witness. So either way it goes, that's a really good possible solution. Now what happens if they bump into you in the hall? What are you going to do about that? Keep walking. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. All right. And what are you going to do in, in, in the lunchroom if they're looking at you and, and it's bothering you? What are you going to do with that? Look at them. Not look at them. Okay. All those are really good solutions, Tamara. The question is, is if you can follow through. Do you think you can? Mm -hmm. Do you have friends yourself? Mm hmm. Hmm. All right. Do they get involved in this fight? These, these fights? No. They don't get in trouble. No. So maybe it's a good idea for you to always pretty much stay with them. And have a group that's there as your friend. And they're not going to get in trouble anyway because that's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that you're the one with the problems with these girls. And so if you stay with your friends, then you have someone else to talk to, someone else to look at, someone else to laugh with, and it's easier to ignore these other girls. Okay? So these are things you can agree to? Okay. Troy, can you explain mm -hmm. again what she has agreed to? Sure. So we make sure we understand completely what you said. And I think there were some good good um, suggestions and good things for her to do. She said when, um, first of all, she's going to stay with her friends. She's going to stay with persons who she knows respect her and like her for her, who won't make fun of her, who won't tease her. 
Um, she said that when you're, you say when you're in the lunchroom, if they're trying to entice you to bother you, are just gonna look the other way. You're gonna act like they're not even there. And you would be amazed to find out what happens when you ignore people and you act like they're not even around you. Um, if they bump into you and try to provoke you to find you, just gonna simply walk away. You're not gonna let them entice you to fight and then have you kicked out of school and take away from your educational growth. And if they're teasing, being immature and petty, um, you just said you're gonna talk to them. Um, if push comes to shove, you're gonna get a principal, you're gonna try to find an adult. But you're not gonna let them push your buttons anymore. You're not gonna let them have power and control over you anymore. That ends with these solutions you said that ends today. You'll see things get better for them. And you can agree to these things, Daniel? Okay, well, we have a contract we want you to sign. And we're going to come check on you in a couple of weeks and make sure you're able to follow through on this, okay? And I'm going to call your principal next week and see how you're doing. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I can tell you, Tamara, being a hairdresser, you can make a lot of money doing that. So it's a really good thing to work toward. But you got to remember all the skills that you're learning right here in school, you're going to need later. This is all very important to you, so make sure you do your stuff, okay? okay well, we've got this contract we'd like you to you sign. And basically it's saying exactly what you've said you're going to do. And so you're signing your, your name that you're going to follow through on this. Before we leave, do you have any other things that you'd like to tell us or anything else you'd like to discuss with us? You're good? Good to go. Good to go. And you're going to have a great day for the rest of the day, right? And tomorrow's going to be a good day, too. No trouble. Very nice meeting you, Tamara. Very nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Good job. Hello, fellas. How y'all doing today? All right. All right. My name is Raheem Smith, and I'm the mediator to work with. You. All right. What are your names, and what grades are you? Uh, my name is Robert Chapman. I'm in the seventh grade. How old are you? Fourteen. I'm Spencer Bowman. I'm in the seventh grade, and I'm twelve. All right. All right. Before we begin, do either of you know what a mediation is? No. No. I don't know. I never heard of it. Okay. A mediation is an attempt to bring about a peaceful, a peaceful settlement between two people, such as yourselves, through the objective intervention of a neutral party. What that mean? In other words, we're not here to choose sides, only to help you resolve your problem. Now, there are some rules that we need to follow during the mediation. All right? Each of you will be allowed to speak. Please do not interrupt each other while the other one is speaking, and wait your turn. Stay in your seat the whole time until we're done. Never call each other any names or put the other person down. Do your best to try and solve the problem today. Whatever is discussed is confidential, except for threats of violence. All right, do both of you guys agree to this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, now, um, can you describe your relationship with the other person before this conflict occurred? Man, he was my best friend, man. We did everything together. We played ball together. You know, we danced together, created dance move together. You know, we did everything together, man. Yeah. That was a road dog. Man. That's a road dog? Yeah. Uh, Robert, is this true? Yes. All right, so, so what caused a change in your relationship? Well, he told Choosy, Choosy Susie, that he wanted, to, she, he wanted to fight me. You know what I'm saying? Choosy Susie, so that ain't true. What is your relationship? Hold on, Spencer. Um, what is your relationship with Choosy Susie? Well, uh, we're just friends. And she's the captain of the cheerleaders of our football team. You know, and, 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 and she, she did me, you know what I'm saying? She, she, you know what I'm saying? She be feeling me, you know? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, can you please tell us what happened, Spencer? All right, so I was in the lunch line, listening to my iPod, minding my own business, my ex girlfriend, Choosy. Tapped me on the shoulder, you know what I'm saying? And she tell me 
Rob say he was the best dancer in Louisiana. Straight up disrespect. You know what I'm saying? He he also said he was the strongest dude in the school. You know, I told him, I don't know about that, but he definitely ain't the best fighter in school, I tell you that. You know. And I guess she went back and told him what I said. And next thing you know, he come up to me and he pushed me. You know, asked me if I want to fight. So I pushed him back and then we started fighting. Are you finished? Straight up hook. That was a, is that it? That was it. All right, so let me get this straight. Choosy told you that Rob said he was the best dancer and the strongest dude in the school. You tell her that you are the best fighter, and Rob comes up to you, pushes you, and asks you if you want to fight. You begin fighting at this point. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now Rob, now you tell us what happened. Well, you know. I was chilling in the union, you know what I'm saying, just practicing my dance moves by myself, you know. When Choosy walks up, you know, she, you know she got a funny look on her face. So I asked, you know, I said, what's up? She told me that Spencer said that he may be a better dancer than me. But I could beat him up. I asked her if he said he wanted to fight me. And she shrugged a little shoulders like, yes. So I walk over to the cafeteria, and I see Spencer, and I tap him on the shoulder. And I ask him, say, man, you want to beat me up? He pushed me, and then we got at it. So that's All right, are you finished now? Yeah, I'm done. Right. So let me get this straight. Choosy walks to the student union mm -hmm. to tell you that Spencer said that you may be the best dancer, but you can't beat him up. Yeah. You asked her if Spencer wanted to fight you. And she suggested with her body language, with her shoulders, and he said that he said yes. Yeah. You walk over to the cafeteria and tap Spencer on the shoulder and asked him if he wanted to beat you up. Spencer pushes you and the two of you began fighting at this point. Does that sound about right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what happened. Okay. All right, now Spencer, now how did this situation make you feel? Well, I mean, choosy. First came to me and told me what he said <laughs> about being the best dancer. It hurt my feelings a little bit because I thought Rob was talking behind my back. And he knows how hard I've been practicing that my dance moves, you know, and I thought that was a little jab at me, you know. And uh, I didn't feel bad that he was the strongest guy because, I mean, you know, he kind of cocked these a little bit, you know, so he probably really is the strongest guy. But, you know, I just felt like he was trying to make me like a little, a small person, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when he approached me and asked me if I wanted to fight him, and he, he pushed me and he looked angry, so I got angry back. You know, I never said I wanted to fight him, though. No. Okay. All right, so, uh, Robert, how did this make you feel? Well, you know, I felt played, you know, when Chuta came and told me what Spence had said, that, you know, I couldn't beat him up. You know what I'm saying? We like brothers, you know, we did, we did everything together. Why, you know, why would I tell her that? You know, I know they used to go together, but man, that was back in the sixth grade. You know, if he if he still like her, all he had to do was tell me, and I left her alone. You know, when I approached Spencer, I didn't try to push him. I just tapped him. He might have thought I pushed him. You know what I'm saying? But I just asked him if he wanted to beat me up. I wasn't asking him to fight. I was asking him a question. You know? I get you. All right. Now, is there anything else that either of you would like to say? Yeah, I want to say something. First of all, I don't even want to. I don't even like her like that no more. You know what I'm saying? I think she's staying. You know what I'm saying? Our relationship is, is in the past. It's sixth grade. I also want to say that I never wanted to. I never said I wanted to fight. Okay. And I'm sorry. This is the impression that he got. And I'm also sorry I pushed him. But I thought he pushed me first. Mm -hmm. see, so. All right, now, Robert, is there anything else that you would like to say? Well. You know, I thought Spencer was saying those things because he liked choosing. Mm. I'm sorry he felt that I pushed him. I was just trying to get things clear about him wanting to beat me up. I didn't want to fight him at all. Okay. All right, now, Spencer, if this situation happened again, what do you think would be the right decision? Well, I guess just not respond to choosing and just Go straight to him, man to man, and hear from the horse's mouth, you know, see what the deal is. And Robert, if this situation happened again, what would be the right decision on your behalf? 
Well, you know, since we boys, I shouldn't have listened to what she was saying before anyway. You know, I should have followed the model. You know what I'm saying? Homies before tenderonies. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, is it safe to say that both of you agree to speak to each other directly next time before reacting what someone else says that someone else said about you? Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. All right. So, Spencer, what would you like Rob to do? Next time, just, just ask me directly, man. You know what I'm saying? Man to man, what's going down? Mm -hmm. You know? For sure. Before right. making assumptions and stuff like that. And Rob, what, what would you want Spencer to do? Man, I want him to tell that stupid girl to stop instigating everything, man. She was just trying to hit on our relationship, that's all, you know. Okay. All right, will you agree to do this, Spencer? I'm cool with that. What about you, Rob? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Do both of you feel that this will solve the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a great job working this out, guys. You had the situation with oh, Cherry. Oh, oh. Thanks. All right, now, Rob, what would you like Spencer to not do? Well, you know, I want him not to tell girls and other people stuff about me, you know what I'm saying? If he got something to tell me, come and tell me to my face, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And Spencer, what would you like for Rob to not do? I want him to do the same thing, and I want him to not believe everything he hear, you know what I'm saying? Just because somebody says something don't necessarily mean it's true. You know, just come to me straight up, face to face, man to man, you know. I went to seventh grade, ain't no time for all that foolish and fancy. I see. All right, well, uh, will both of you agree to do this? Yeah. Okay. And do each of you both feel that this thing, this will solve the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a good job working this out, guys. We handle the situation with maturity and dignity. And I'm very proud of both of you. Now, I'd like for you to sign this contract based on your solution. Once again, great job working this out. Okay, so Rob, yeah. you agree not to fight Spencer, not to disrespect him, and not to listen to what other people have to say about you, all right? Yeah. Okay. And Spencer, you agree not to fight and not to disrespect Rob. And also, not to tell other people what is going on between the both of you, but to come directly to him if you have a problem. I can do that. That's correct? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so I have this peer mediation agreement that I need both of you to sign. Um, and I'm going to sign it. I'm going to date it. You know, we were trying to mediate with you and uh, Mr. Dunn. Mm -hmm. We decided to separate you guys because it didn't seem as if you guys want to follow some of the rules we set down. So in this separate one, we're going to uh, kind of reiterate some of the rules we had uh, put down before. Uh, first thing is, uh, I don't want you to call Mr. Dunn outside his name when we discuss it. Okay. Uh, I want you to do your best, and we're going to try to help you today to make sure we solve the problem. And uh, I want you to know that whatever's discussed in this mediation today is going to stay confidential. What happens said in here is going to stay in here. Except if we have any issues of, say, a threat of violence or whatever, I'm obligated to have to report that uh, outside of here. You think you can agree to these rules? Yeah, I, I can agree to those rules. All right. So, Ryan, what, what brings us here today? Uh, well, basically, um, my brother beat the guy up, uh, Dunn, and he, he said I was going around telling everybody that my brother beat him up, but I really wasn't. I told one of, one of my friends, you know, that my brother beat him up just kind of in conversation, and I guess it got out, and he found out, and he started getting all mad and stuff, and then uh, he, I guess after a while he saw me in the cafeteria, and he threw a... Uh, he threw a steak at me and then we start fighting. So, you know, he said he beat me up, but I think I want to fight. So. Okay. Look, look, how were you and Mr. Dunn before this happened? You, how would you describe your relationship? You guys have a good relationship, rocky? Or? Well, I, I ain't really like him because we had, you know, some little, well, I didn't have a problem. It's kind of like his girlfriend wanted to talk to me. Okay. So he, he was already not liking me and, you know, 
saying, you know, he'd just look mad at me at school and, you know, be saying stuff. And I just let it slide off because I wasn't worried about it. You know, it was his girlfriend. I wasn't really trying to do nothing with it, though. All right, let me see if I got this right. Uh, you believe Mr. Dunn was mad at you because he thought or overheard from a third person that you were saying some things that might have been unfavorable about him, maybe concerning the fight. Yeah. And uh, possibly he might have had some ill feelings towards you because he may have thought that your girlfriend liked you or yeah, that's kind you of liked her, but yeah. nothing really was going on. Yeah, that, that's what it was. All right. So, I guess I'm reiterating what I said uh, earlier, but so would you agree that the problem originated when uh, Mr. Dunn was told by the third person that you were saying some things about him? Yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of, that's kind of what it was. Like, if that person wouldn't have told, you know, I guess told more people, and I don't even know how many people they told, but okay. that kind of... I was, it wasn't like I was running around spreading the rumors about him, like he say, but that I, I would say that's probably where the problem started. Okay. Now, how did that make you feel when, because I'm sure you got wind of what was happening before uh, you guys actually had a fight, but how did it make you feel when you found out he was upset or might have been upset with what he thought you were doing? I ain't really care. It was kind of like, you know, you got beat up, and I told somebody, you know, he, but he wanted, he got all mad and all that, so, you know, I don't, he just got to, you know, take the L, he got beat up, and I told somebody. If you had to find a solution today, or before we even get to solutions, what would you have liked to have seen Mr. Dunn do differently, possibly? I mean, <laughs> not, you know, try not to talk about, don't throw a steak at me in the, in the cafeteria, definitely, and, you know, if we could just go our own separate ways, like, you know, you know, I don't have to talk to him, I don't, you know, I don't really want any trouble, but if he come throwing steaks, I'm, I got something for him. Gotcha. Uh, I guess I'm trying to, to formulate how to ask you this question. It's kind of the same question over again now. But uh, so one of the solutions you were saying that, uh, might exist is that. Uh, Stop. But let me ask you that question before I put some words in your mouth. How do you think, how, what solutions do you think we could have used to solve this? Or maybe have, uh, well, since we've already had a fight, what solutions do you think we could use to prevent another fight from happening? I mean, it's really on him because I'm not going to go fighting him. So it's kind of, he got to do it. Y'all just got to tell him just to leave me alone. Don't talk to me. So if, if uh, when we talk to Mr. Dunn and we could get him to uh, understand that you guys might not even want to conversate and he agrees to that, then you'd, be, you'd agree to that? I would agree to that just to leave, just leave each other alone. I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not going to say nothing bad about him. Okay. Up to now, we've talked about what he did or we would like for him to do. Now I'm going to ask you uh, about you. If we could do this all over again, how would you, you think there would be some things you'd do differently? I, I probably, I, would, I wouldn't tell my friend that my brother beat him up. I would have just not brought it to school because that created the whole problem. Me saying, you know, that my, telling my friend that my brother beat him up and stuff. So I would, wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you a few more questions now. They may not seem like they're directly related initially, but what would you like to do when you grow up? You get out of high school. What do you envision yourself? I, I wanna, I wanna go to LSU, play football, be a mm -hmm. running back, mm -hmm. and then go to uh, play for the Saints. Okay. I wanna, I wanna be the next Reggie Bush. You get another Super Bowl. Huh? Yeah. So that's a good goal and it's doable. It happens. But if football didn't work out for you, um, LSU didn't work out for you, what would you like to do? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd go to college somewhere and mm -hmm. still try to play football. But if I couldn't play football, I'd, I'd try to get one of those type of degrees. Uh, I think like a, a music engineering or something because I like music. 
Okay. Well, look, let's do this. Let's set up a follow-up date for us to talk again. I want you to think some more about what it is you want to do when you grow up. Okay. Uh, Okay, Mr. Hamilton, you said that you wanted to be a running back at LSU and play for the Saints, right? Yeah. Well, do you know what it takes to get into college? No, nah, not really. Okay, well, first of all, you have to pass all your classes and stop getting in trouble in middle school, right? Okay. And make good grades in middle school so you can go to high school. And once you get in high school, you have to make good grades there as well. Um, not only do you have to make good grades, but you have to pass tests every year. From your freshman to your senior year, you take these standardized tests to make sure that you're on the grade level that you're supposed to be on, and then you have to take another test to graduate from high school. Have you ever heard of the ACT? Nah. Okay. The ACT is a standardized test that's given to all students who want to go to college. So any college you want to go to, be it playing football at LSU or whatever school you decide to become a musical engineer, if you decide that you don't want to play football anymore, you have to take this test and get a pretty good score on it. So not only do you have to study for classes in high school, you're gonna have football practice in high school, you have to pass the yearly exams, you also have to study for this other test just to get into college. And then when you, you can do that? I know you can do that, <laughs> I know you can. Um, and once you get into college, you still have to maintain those same grades, if not higher, that you had in high school. Like you have to be, you have to go to class, get up every morning, you know, your mom's not going to be there, your parents aren't going to be there to tell you to get up and go to class in the morning. So it's a big responsibility that you have when you get to college. Not only do you have to go to football practice, go to class, you know, you have to keep your behavior in order as well because your behavior follows you. Your whole record from what you're doing now until you get to college is going to follow you there. So that's why we're here talking to you because you have to be really conscious of the things that you're doing here because it's going to follow you into high school, into college. That's why we don't want you fighting because I want to see you on television playing for the Saints. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's say you get this big Saints contract, right? You're making these millions of dollars. You have to know how to read that contract. Mm -hmm. You don't want people to take all your money from you before you're able to spend it. So in college, those are the necessary skills that you're going to have to gain while you're playing football, on top of making good grades, on top of going to class, um, you have to really be able to understand what you're getting yourself into. So when a GM from the Saints comes and gives you this great contract, you understand what's going on and people won't take your money from you. Okay? That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, but it's nothing that you can't do and it's nothing that you can't I can do it though. I know you can. So we're, we're talking to right now. You just want them to leave you alone. So. You leave him alone, and you all stay away from each other, and you start focusing on what's really important, which is you ultimately going to LSU and playing for the Saints. All right. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so um, now that we've talked about your career goals, let's go back to the situation that we're dealing with now with uh, Mr. Dunn. What is it that you would like for him to stop doing? I just want him to leave me alone, like stop talking about me, you know, just don't, I don't want him to throw nothing else at me. Just just stay out of my way, and I'm going to stay out of his way. Okay. Okay, so you want him to leave you alone, stop talking about you, stay out of your way. So what is it What is it that you would like for him to start doing? Just just give me my respect. Give you your respect? Yeah, just respect. That's fair. That's fair. Respect is very important. And I respect him. Hello, my name is Michael Walker, and we're here today to reserve whatever conflict you may be having using mediation. Have either of you participated in a mediation before? No. No? Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you about it. Mediation is a way to resolve disputes by talking about the problem that you may be having. Our job as mediators is to listen to both sides of the conflict and to help each of you come up with a better way of dealing with the problem than you may already be using. We might offer suggestions on how to deal with your problems, but we're not here to take sides, and it's going to be up to each of you to decide the best way to resolve the problem. Before we begin, there are a few ground rules that we need to have both of you agree to. Each of you will be given a chance to tell us what you feel the problem is, but please do not interrupt each other. Wait until it's your turn to talk. Please stay seated during the mediation. Do not call each other names or put one another down. Mediation is about finding solutions to problems in a mature way. 
be committed to resolving this dispute today so that both of you can leave mediation with a sense of something is, that something was accomplished. We want you to know that everything that is said in mediation is confidential. Well, almost everything. If either of you threatens the other or someone else, I'll have to report the threats of violence. Anything other than that and it doesn't leave this room. Now can each of you agree to those ground rules? That's fine. All right, good. Now, what are your names and grades? My name is Jean Gray, and I'm in seventh grade. My name is Emma Frost, and I'm in seventh grade, too. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. Uh, be sure and keep in mind the ground rules that you agree to, and let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with Jean, because she's on our left, and we always start on the person with our, on our left. That is something we do to be fair, so let's begin. Jean, please start from the beginning and tell us what happened. Well, me and Scott have been going out since before Christmas, and then about two weeks ago we got into a fight at my aunt's barbecue and broke up. But I didn't even care, I didn't even like Scott that much. Then Scott started trying to go with Emma, because he thought it would make me jealous, but I didn't care. Me and Emma have been friends since the fifth grade, and if she wants him, she can have him. But he won't stop calling me, and she's been getting all up in my face, so I told her she better not try to play me, or she's going to get hurt. Okay, so let me get this straight. You and Emma have been friends for a few years and haven't had any problems with each other. But now that Emma and Scott have started going out with each other, you two have begun having problems because Scott keeps calling you. Yeah, that's right. Scott keeps calling me, telling me he wants me back, and I don't even care about that. I don't need his mess. But he's always calling, so I have to answer the phone. And then last weekend, Scott called my house and was saying stuff like, Emma said you better stop calling me or she's going to make sure you stop. I was like, what? She better not get in my face or I'm a smacker. Then all of a sudden, Emma was on the phone three-way and she starts off talking like, you ain't going to smack anybody. I'm, I'm going to mess you up if you don't stop trying to talk to my man and all. They was both trying to play me and I hadn't, and I ain't having that. I told Emma she, she best wait till I see her at school is going to be on. All right, it seems like the real problem uh, was this past weekend when Scott and Emma called you on three-way and uh, Emma started acting like she was going to fight you. Is that correct? Yeah, they tried to play me and I'm not going to be played. Okay, Emma, now that you've heard Jean's side of the story, can you give us yours? Yeah, I did call her on three-way, but it was Scott's idea. I didn't even say any of that stuff. He just told her not to be calling him anymore. That was it. And then on Monday, Jean came into her room talking about, I got a fake weed, and that Scott just wants to be with me to get some. She got everyone in class laughing at me and pulling on my hair. She knows I don't even have a weed. You know you're giving it up. That's the only reason he wants to be with you. All right, Jean, you uh, agreed that you weren't going to you know, talk bad to one another or call names. So if you can just keep to the ground rules, we can move forward. Is that okay? Okay, I'll stop. All right. All uh, right. Now, Emma, is that all that you had? I mean, that was all I had to say about it. She just started out getting this at school, started talking about me, and, you know, everyone at school has been laughing about my hair and saying how Scott's going to get some for me, and she's the one trying to play me. Okay, well, I think uh, we've pretty much felt out what the real issues are, so we're going to separate each of you into what we call separate caucuses so that we can hear each of your side of the story and maybe if you want to add a little bit more to it. So we'll leave the room now and we'll uh, meet back in just a minute. Okay. All right, Emma, I, I just wanted to remind you now that we're in the separate caucus that everything is 100% confidential and that I'm not going to be said, telling Jean anything that you tell me. So how about you tell me about you know, your side of the story? Okay, well, actually we've been friends a long time until recently, but I think she's mad at me because me and Scott have been dating this year. And how's that make you feel? I feel angry because I don't like the way she has everyone in school picking on me. Well, you said that you two used to be friends. Would you like to get back to being friends again? I mean, I miss some of the things we used to do, but I think she's just so jealous of me now and just jealous of me and Scott that I really don't have much to say to her anymore. 
Well, how do you think Jean feels about the situation? Can you put yourself in her place? I mean, Jean, she's probably mad too. I mean, Scott is with me and she doesn't have a boyfriend this year, so she's probably upset. Do you think she might still like Scott? She says she doesn't, but she keeps calling my man. And you're 100% sure that she's still calling him? Well, I mean, he tells me she is. Well, Emma, if you remember, you and Scott called her on three-way. Jean didn't call you or Scott that day, right? No, she didn't. Scott wanted to do the three-way. I was just listening in until Jean started talking about smacking me. So, the three-way call was really what started all the drama. And since before then, you and Jean... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, since then, you and Jean haven't been friends. Right. And I didn't even call her. I mean, Scott did. Okay, so is there any possibility that Jean could just be mad because Scott called her on three-way? I mean, I guess. Do you think that you could have handled the situation differently at all? Yeah, probably. I probably could have just called her myself and not gotten on three-way with Scott. Well, why do you say that? What would you have done if you called her? Well, now that I really think about it, Scott was really eager to call Jean on three-way. He didn't like her more than she liked... He did like her more than she liked him when they dated. So Scott could be playing games, and if he is, I'm going to break up with him. Well, realizing that Scott may have caused the problems, how would you like to resolve the situation with Jean today? What would your suggestions be? Well, first, I would just like to ask her to stop telling lies on me in school about having a weave and all this kind of stuff. And then maybe I would just like to talk to her myself about the whole three-way call and tell her maybe I shouldn't have called her like that and it was Scott's idea and not mine. And then maybe she and I can call him on three-way and see if he's lying. Okay, well, let me uh, talk to Jean and hear her side of the story and hopefully we can get this worked out. Okay. Jean, how are you? I uh, just wanted to remind you that I'm not going to be able to tell Emma anything that you and I talk about, and I just really want to hear what uh, your issues are today. Okay, that's good. So can you tell me what you think the main problem is? Scott and Emma keep calling me, trying to make me jealous about them dating. And do you think maybe Emma could be telling you the truth, that she really doesn't want to call you, but that Scott was the one making her jealous? I don't know, but if she doesn't stop calling Emma, fight her and her get her weave. Okay, Jean, we probably need to calm down just a little bit. Remember, we can't be threatening anyone or calling names or anything like that. Um, I guess you really like Scott, huh? Um, I don't want Scott no more. He irritates me. He makes my head hurt. I don't want him anymore. I just want him to leave me alone. Okay, well, if you're not jealous of Scott and Emma dating, uh, can you tell me a little bit about you and Emma's friendship before uh, she started dating Scott? We were friends. We grew up together. We were even born at the same hospital. We've known each other forever. And she just started dating him, and all of a sudden she just acts funny time toward me. And so do you still want to be friends with her? Not really. And is that based on the whole calling incident and everything? Well, the calling incident and because... If she was real my friend, she would be trying to mess with my man. Um, well, do you miss your friendship with her? Um, sometimes I miss it, but I can do without her. Okay. Well, uh, what would you say if Scott was the one that was calling uh, and that it actually wasn't Emma's fault that Scott initiated the three-way call? Um, I probably feel a lot better about her, but I would wonder why she went along with it anyway. Well, you can't really control Emma or Scott, and the only thing you can do is really look after yourself. Uh, could you have possibly ignored the phone calls or maybe, you know, walked away at school and not instigated things there? 
I could have. Maybe you should try just to stay away from Scott and ignore his comments and focus on yourself and your schoolwork. Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a nurse. I like babies. Well, that's great. Uh, you definitely need to focus on your reading and math and science classes, and you'll probably be able to reach that goal. You seem like a really smart girl. Uh, do you think maybe you should apologize at least to Emma before we end today? Um, I probably should just apologize to her period and just let it go. And do you think there's anything that you could do differently if Scott doesn't stop his behavior? Um, I guess I could just ignore him. Well, I, you know, I think that's a good idea some of the time. Uh, people tease you a lot and you're going to get that for the rest of your life and you just have to learn to deal with it and stay focused on your goals. Uh, let's bring Emma back in here and we'll see if we can wrap this whole thing up. Okay. Alright ladies, well uh, now that I've heard from both of you, uh, I'd really like to, uh, for y'all to tell each other you know, what you'd like to see happen today. I mean, we're going to start with Jean. Can you tell Emma what you would like to happen after today? Well, I would like Emma to know that I didn't like how she played me on the phone with Scott. Um, I don't like how she's been acting lately. And I want her to stop threatening me and saying that she wrote me up if I don't leave Scott alone. And Emma, do you think that you'd be able to stop doing that? Well, first off, I want Jean to start telling everybody that I have a weed and that the only reason why Scott is with me is because I'm going to give him some. And Jean, will you agree to stop telling the rest of the school kids that uh, Scott only wants to be with Emma because she's trying to get some and uh, stop saying things about her weave in class? I, mean, I guess I can, yeah. I don't have a weave. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was my mistake that, you know, that she doesn't have a weave. <laughs> right, I'm sorry about that. I, you are totally right. I was just uh, repeating what she said and I didn't mean to imply that you had a weave at all. Um, Emma, can you stop threatening Jean if she agrees to stop doing those other things and, you know, Scott leaves you alone as well? Yes. Alright, and do both of you think that uh, this will solve the problem? Yeah, yeah. man. Okay. Jean, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, Emma and I used to be friends, and like I said, we we're born at the same hospital and we've been friends for a long time. I just want her to treat me like she used to before she started dating my ex-boyfriend. Emma, after hearing Jean say that, do you think you'd agree to you know, maybe rebuild that friendship a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to say we have been friends for a long time and, you know, it probably is silly to let Scott mess our friendship up. And Jean, you think that sounds good? That's good. All right. Well, uh, I think that. Okay, so Gene, you can agree to, you know, not call in this house anymore and, you know, not let Scott talk you into those sorts of things, right? Mm-hmm. And Emma, you can agree that you're not going to talk about Gene having a Confused. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I have been getting yeah. confused. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all I was like, okay. I like